welcome back to Bob Brack and the second part of my favourite British crime films. So, uh, number three is this one, 1971's Villain, starring Richard Burton. Um, so this film was kind of been for, for forgotten about, I think, for a, a good amount of time. So, obviously there's another more famous British crime film comes out in 1971. Um, basically, at this time, Burton's, you know, starting to go on the downward slide. He's putting out a lot of films, for, you know, doing stuff for money. And the perception is he's wasted his talent, but uh, I think this is one where, you know, he, he comes in and gives a really great performance. So he plays uh, uh, Vic Deacon, a mother fixate homosexual gangster. Um, uh, and uh, basically, there's a, a really kind of brutal kind of... Um, uh, guy gets kind of slashed at the start. Um, yeah, what's interesting about this film, it's kind of kind of seedy. Um, it's directed by a guy called Michael Tuckner. I'm just checking that, yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm not sure what else he did. I didn't check on uh, filmographies to check that, but Ian McShane's in it. Uh, amazing, Ian McShane's been in three of my top ten. Uh, and he plays his lover, a guy called Wolf. Um, uh, it's obviously tapping into like the craze, uh, one half of the craze. Um, but it's it's got a brutal nastiness about it, and they do a really cool bank heist sequence. Well, no, sorry, it's a security van robbery, uh, and they go up into a kind of old into a new kind of uh, industrial estate. So all the roads are kind of partly finished, and there's a lot of space around it. But there's a really cool bit where they um they take the um uh, the suitcase, but it's got a kind of anti theft device in it. Uh, it's not suitcases, whatever, put the money in, some, and kind of spikes come out. Joss Ackland plays uh, one of his crew, uh, and he's really good in it. Um, uh, so it's, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of forgotten about little classic, really. Um, I think the first time I saw it was sometime in the 90s, and then it wasn't on TV again for ages, and I used to talk about it with a mate at Union, and then we managed to track down a copy, and I got the DVD. The DVD came out uh, probably about 20 years ago, uh, maybe 15 uh, and that kind of reignited interest in it as a kind of forgotten about film really uh, so it's well worth checking out it's one of Burton's you know his, his final from in the 70s onwards Burton really doesn't do that many great films he's very good at Equus um, Medusa Touch is good fun uh, 1984 but this this is like the pick of the bunch and it's a really a really top gritty proper 70s British crime film so 1971's villain is number three. Number two uh, is an all-time classic of British cinema. This film was actually shot in 1979, but wasn't premiered until a film festival, probably the London Film Festival, right at the end of 1980, and it's got its proper release in 1981. And by that point, we were, uh, you know, fully into the Thatcher era, but um, the themes it explores are actually predating, really, what's going to happen uh, in under Thatcherism, and that is uh, it's not it's the Long Good Friday, so basically Bob Hoskins is casting this on the back of his uh, breakout role in Pennies from Heaven, the TV Dennis Potter adaptation, and he plays Harold Shand. He plays a kind of Cagney, well Edward G. Robinson, London gang boss who's trying to go legitimate, like um, Michael Corleone in Godfather Three later on. Uh, he's wanting to move his business into property, and he's got this idea to, to develop. The key side, and he's got some American backing coming in. Uh, so again, it's predating that the thing uh, with factorism about property, uh, about um, you know, uh, obviously Thatcher will sell like um, uh, council housing and stuff like that. It, it's this idea that property isn't something we live in; it's going to create wealth and generate wealth. Obviously, he's going to have businesses in these um, uh, tower blocks and office developments. He's going to do basically. Uh, Something goes wrong. There's there's uh, something. There's an explosion at one of his pubs he owns. Uh, this starts to spook the Americans. Uh, he bullshits them that it's a gas explosion, but someone's out to get him. Uh, and this is the beauty of the film. He doesn't realize what uh, is happening uh, throughout the film. He doesn't realize, and again, the the political aspect to it also mirrors the the times because basically one of his crew has somehow pissed off the RA and the RA are coming into London uh, and want to extract uh, revenge, I suppose. Um, the, the character who's um, uh, 
uh, got into bother and gets murdered at the start is actually Paul Freeman who plays Belloc in Raiders of the Lost Ark, but this is before he appeared in that film. Uh, it's got um, Derek, um, God, I've forgotten his second name, he's Charlie from Casualty in a key role and is a, a really powerful scene in the end. Helen Millen's magnificent in this. Uh, a bit of a sort of breakout here by the time this came out in 81, she was also in Excalibur and I think, I think this really established her film career. Um, so, uh, and I forget the name of another actor who's playing the, um, uh, Brian, somebody or other, sorry, um, and he's playing the uh, counsellor as well, so they've got a counsellor on the payroll. Uh, yeah, it's just brilliant. It's got a great musical score by a guy called Francis Monkman. I think he was in Sky, the John Williams project. Um, but um, it's just, uh, it's got this great plotting, and you, you, it's one of those films you don't really realise what's going on until the end, and it's got one of the most magnificent endings in all, all film or British film or cinema and basically um, Pierce Brosnan a pre-bomb Pierce Brosnan is an RA gun he's got his gun uh, trained on Hoskins in the back of a car and Hoskins you can see he's playing it round in his head what's happened and it's only in the final denouement and then he does this kind of you know thing where he has this resignation that he's going to die and he's he's misread the situation and his dreams are in tatters but um, what happened in that was uh, the director John McKenzie basically sat in the front of the car and basically shouted kind of directions to Hoskins to a moat on his face uh, and then obviously there was no dialogue in the scene it's just blasting Francis Mugman's score uh, and it just works superbly um, so John McKenzie went on to make other films in the fourth protocol the honorary console um, I forget what he did in the 90s um, quite a few things did the film uh, with Kate Blanchett was it Joan Allen sorry Joan Allen uh, I think about a murdered Irish journalist, Veronica, something or other. But he, he never topped this. I think he'd done one film before this. It's one of those one film wonders where a guy just makes one all time classic. Um, actually, the next film we're going to look at is probably a case in point with that. It doesn't mean to say he didn't make other interesting films, but he just makes, oh, this is great. So, Long Good Friday is my number two choice. So, let's just play back down the top ten. Sitting Cargate at number 10, Payroll at 9, Lair Cake at 8, 7 was Brighton Rock, 6 Hell Drivers, 5 I Cheated, The Sweeney One and 2, 4 Sexy Beast, 3 we had Villain, and number 2 Long Good Friday, and number 1, you know what this is, uh, it's 1971's Get Carter, undoubtedly the greatest British gangster film ever made. Um, so, uh, little story about this, uh, always had a long before it kind of got cult popularity this in the early late 90s early noughties um, as far back as, uh, as the early 80s my brothers used to say oh there's this get caught with Mark Kane we saw it the other night it's great he, he comes out of his house with no clothes on with a gun so I was always you know keen to see it and then um, I think it popped up on TV about 84 maybe 85 I watched it uh, and then I think it was on Movie Drone as well and these were probably my first couple of viewings um, I'd certainly seen it before, um, for anyone watching this who's not aware of where I live, I live in um, uh, Newcastle, Pontine, I actually live over in Gateshead. So when I first came to, to uh, Newcastle, I um, basically went to study at the college and lived just down the road from me in a place called Ellswick, opposite a place called Cur Curtis Park. And when I first came to Newcastle, you could literally look across from there and you could see the car park in Gateshead where he throws... Um, uh, Oh, well, we call him Alf Roberts, uh, we'll come to that, uh, off the car park. And that, it's a cliched phrase, but the, the, the car park in Gateshead was, was a kind of iconic building in the Newcastle Gateshead area. Everyone knew it was the Get Carter car park, it's sadly been demolished now. Um, but it was an eyesore and it was going to rack and ruin. Um, uh, but anyway, this film, yeah, it's, um, you know, Mike Hodges again, Mike Hodges' does other films, fast Flash Gordon's a kind of camp classic, but this, you know, this is his one film wonder. This is his all-time classic. Um, what's great about this, it rewards on repeated viewing. It has a kind of Shakespearean labyrinthine plot. And all the little clues are there. You know, the Doreen's actually his daughter. You know, the, the, I think the guy, I think the hitman might even be following on the train up at the start. You know, you see a little shot of his ring. Um, it's got a fantastic musical score by Roy Budd. Um... Uh, just amazing dialogue. Uh, Ian Hendry's superb. Um, uh, you know, it's 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 one of those films that flows from great scenes to great sequence. You know, John Osborne's amazing. Uh, the playwright in it, uh, one of his few film roles. Um, and it's a film like you know, like I I've just loved. 
Kane's never been better. He's, he's chilling in this, you know, it uses his eyes, the hood, hooded, um, hoods of his eyes really well, you know, um, the way he looks in the camera, you know, Jack's a true anti-hero, he's a, just he's basically a psychopath. And there's lots of casual, horrible violence in this, like, you know, he puts the, the, the girl in the trunk of the car and then she gets thrown, the car gets put in the water uh, by the two of the hoods, obviously one of them is Tony Beckley, who's Camp Freddy in the Italian job, and also Harrison Chase uh, in the Doctor Who episode. Um, uh, God, I can't remember it now, The Seeds of Doom. A great British character actor, sadly no longer with us. Um, but that's it, you've got um, uh, Glyn, Glyn Edwards, I think it is. He was the, uh, he's in it. Um, he was uh, the uh, barman around the pub in Minder. You know, there's lots of faces in this, uh, and he makes great use of the locations. Um, uh, it's uh, in that era where stuff's been knocked down in the Newcastle area. There's kind of new modernist builds. Uh, the flats he goes over to uh, where he meets a girl and first sees the porn film. Uh, that was called The Village. That's um, long been knocked down. Uh, but that was a kind of modernist monstrosity, post-war monstrosity. Um, so, yeah, it's um, yeah, Kane's best performance. It's got great musical score. The photography's great. The pacing, if you're... You know, if you're living in Newcastle, it's got great locations that are no longer there. Pretty much everything has been either knocked down or is used for something else. Um, uh, and yeah, it's um, you know, it's a pretty reasonable hit in Britain at the time, but it wasn't a popular film. Uh, and um, you know, like I said, I was already into it before it became the cult it was. Uh, but it, it just reputation just kind of grew. I've not actually watched it for many years, but I'm excited to watch it again. Uh, um, and really, in the end, you know, Jack, the Jack Carter character gets his comeuppance, really. He's not a nice guy. Um, and, uh, you know, that final scene, I think it was filmed up at Blythe, uh, something like that, on the beach. Um, uh, you know, uh, very poignant, but um, uh, brilliantly done. So that is my, my top film, Get Carter. It was only ever going to be that. And anyone who knows me personally knows it would be that. And anyone watching this would probably be, you know, there's only really the Long Good Friday that could pip. Uh, get Carter. Okay, cheers. So I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you again soon. Thanks very much.